this is an exciting production, first time here at the Virginia Opera. And if you're not really familiar with Wagner, or you're not a huge fan of opera, uh, Wagner opera specifically, this is a great first Wagner piece. It's definitely one of the most accessible Wagner titles. So um, our box office is open tonight. Uh, please consider purchase, purchasing tickets, and we also have sus subscriptions on sale. Um, without further ado, I'm now going to turn the microphone over to our very own Dr. Glenn Winters. Please give him a huge round of applause. Thank you, Robert. Good evening, folks. Thanks for joining us here for this opera up close, Wagner's Der Fliegende Holländer, The Flying Dutchman. Um, you know, there are a lot of opera lovers who are fine with Barbara of Seville, with Tosca, with Carmen, with the tuneful melodic standards who are a little bit iffy when it comes to the Wagnerian repertoire, who are not so sure about that Wagner stuff and maybe avoid it because they have preconceived stereotype kind of ideas about Wagner's music. There might be some right here amongst you. I'm here to allay your fears tonight. Uh, this opera kind of runs counter to many of those ideas that we have about Wagner. Uh, for instance, Guess what? It's two hours of music, start to finish, bang. Uh, the presidential debates last longer than this opera, okay? You're gonna be fine. It's not one of those that goes on for hours and hours. Somebody once said about Wagner that if it starts at uh, eight o'clock in the evening, they sing for three hours and you sneak a peek at your watch and it's 8.15. That's the, the problem with Wagner. Not this one. Uh, this was a young Wagner. Uh, he was still writing in a kind of a popular style in accordance with those uh, standard operas that he made his living conducting uh, in the opera houses of Europe at that point in time. Uh, so you're in and out. Also, you know, a lot of people feel like, Wagner, there are never any tunes, any good toe-tapping melodies like La Donna Immobile or you know, any of the, the Abanera from Carmen, why couldn't they write a good tune? Instead, we have these endless monologues that plod on with their light motifs, these short little fragments that just get spun together like a spider's web, and there's no tunes! This opera has tunes. This opera is chock full of singable, toe-tapping melodies, arias, actual arias, like a normal opera. However, I will warn you that when you hear these popular style melodies in The Flying Dutchman, they are a little bit subversive. They are used with a little bit of irony that kind of takes them out of the realm of a normal tuneful opera. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So anyway, I want, to, I want you to leave here tonight with a pretty firm grasp of what this opera is like. And to do that, we're gonna relate it to a couple of movies, a couple of Hollywood films that you may be familiar with. One of them will help us understand just the story because it has basically the same story. The other is gonna help us interpret the characters and the music. And the films I'm talking about are that Bill Murray comedy from 1993, Groundhog Day, that they show every February on cable TV without fail. And the other is that 1999 sci-fi action flick, The Matrix. Any sci-fi fans here? Any of you see The Matrix? Don't worry if you haven't. I can tell this is not the demographic for Keanu Reeves. I kind of sense that about you people. It's okay. I'll catch you up on what The Matrix is all about. Uh, what does the Groundhog Day have to do with Flying Dutchman? It's the same story. What happens in Groundhog Day? Bill Murray is an arrogant guy who is punished by some unknown cosmic force for his arrogance by being condemned to live the same day over and over and over, apparently for eternity. Uh, it gets very wearisome. He's stuck in the same hotel room every morning. The clock radio plays Sonny and Cher. Hundreds, probably thousands of times he grows distraught He's miserable, he's tormented. He wants to end it all. 
there's a montage of scenes where Bill Murray drives his car off a cliff, jumps off a tall building, steps in front of a truck, drops a toaster in the bathtub, but there's nothing he can do. He can't die in the next morning. He's back in that hotel room. And what finally lifts the curse? The love of a wonderful woman. And I just told you the story of the Flying Dutchman, a sea captain who, for his arrogance, in this case, a blasphemy during a hurricane at sea, is doomed to sail the stormy seas for eternity. He's miserable. He wants nothing more than to die, but he cannot die. And the spell, he's going to be redeemed, and the spell will be lifted by the love of Zenta, the woman who will uh, give up everything for him. I'm not sure the producers of Groundhog Day uh, realized that they were reinterpreting uh, the Fliegende Hollander, but they kind of were. <laughs>